My name is Nikhil Patel. I was, studied at Roehampton between 2013 to 2016, and I studied biomedical science. So to believe it or not, it, Roehampton was not my first choice. Like I actually came through Roehampton through clearing. I did apply for other universities to start with, but unfortunately I didn't get the grades that would meet those universities I applied for. So at that point I was kind of panicking of, where you're in, you just go into a state, state of shock because you see your results slip and you look at your UCAS and you don't see, and it says declined or not accepted and you kind of go into panic. And I think I sort of, should then after that, it took about half an hour to process what had happened, but it then took, like, you keep you cool and you know there's other, like, processes in place to help you find a place at university. So I then went on to the UCAS website, found out about clearing and just looked through clearing places. I studied, I predominantly studied science at A-level, so I wanted to do a science medical based subject. Um, and then I saw University of Roehampton and I saw they done, they had places for biological sciences first. And um, I applied for biological sciences and I got contacted by Stuart, Stuart Semple, um, who's one of the lecturers at Roehampton. And he actually was really nice and he said, why don't you come down, take a tour of the university before you make a decision. Also have a look around the facilities we have. So I came came down and I met with Stuart and he took me for a tour. And then we went back to his office and he actually sat me down and talked really about my career goals and what I wanted to do in the future. And at that point, he was really, really nice and saying, look, biological sciences may not be the one for you, but we do biomedical sciences at Roehampton and we have places available um, for you to study and that you meet the grades for and I thought that firstly from that interaction is set the precedence from Roehampton they thought of me at the first like from the first hurdle of applying and getting through clearing and it was really nice to have that so yeah I came through clearing and um, yeah it was a it was a really smooth process once I sort of contacted Roehampton. Yeah, so I actually lived on a Digby Stewart College, one of the best colleges on campus, for sure. And yeah, I lived in halls of residence for actually two years. So the first year was just as a normal student. And the second year I signed up to be a flat rep, which entails looking after other students and making sure their experience at Roehampton was the same as mine in my first year. If I was going to say it would be friendly, inclusive, and diverse. Of course, you got you, you miss Roehampton all the time. Like uh, when when people graduate from university, you're thrown into the world of work, and uh, it, it's hard to adjust to start with. But it gets better. But every time you look at the good times you've had at Roehampton, the support you were given, the family you actually gain from graduating from Roehampton, you do miss aspects of it from. The Friday night bop to uh, just chilling in the union bar with friends or taking part in one of the sports teams. I was lucky enough to be part of the squash team. And sometimes you lose your way when you go to work at participating in sports and gym and etc. But those are the aspects of university I really miss. I think one piece of advice I would have is and it's, it's purely work focused and study focused, really. It is transferable skills. Whatever you do at Roehampton, whether it will be academic, I could have an academic focus and or a social focus, you gain those transferable skills from leading a sports team that would give you leadership. If you're sitting in a biomedical science lecture and doing Excel data, Everyone uses data on a day-to-day -day basis. We're becoming a data-based world. Like, and I, I think I've never, there's never a day where I don't look at a piece of data. And those skills come really handy, especially when you're writing your dissertation and you can transfer that into the real world. And I can't stress enough, and I stress it all the time. I do talk to the biomed students every year, um, the first year students, and I do talk to them about transferable skills and having, having a notebook near you or in the evening, just noting noting down what you've done and what skills what skills you gain from that that will help you in the future. I think the one memory that comes to mind was taking part in Jailbreak, uh, which was run by the Roehampton Students Union. 
So this, we were tasked to get from University of Roehampton to a place furthest away as possible without spending any money. And I think one memory is me and Daniel Drakeford, my my friend, um, we were in Marseille uh, in, in the morning and we were just like, can we go home now? We hadn't slept for like 36 hours and we had these horrible Nutridane bars that had been squashed into the bottom of our bags. But it always reminds me of Roehampton because it, we raised so much money for it. We got, we won some, won some prizes for it and um, it was such a good event thrown by the Students Union to get involved with. And it really built you as a person to, to struggle for 36 hours without any sort of money and going from one place to another and country to country. It's always a hard question to envisage where you are because when you work for different companies, you don't just move up, you move sideways. You, you, you don't, it's not, not always a linear path to where you want to be. So at the moment, I currently work for a large pharmaceutical company as a project partner. And I, I joined the industry three years ago, the pharmaceutical industry three years ago. And I, I had different jobs in clinical trials, in, mark, in sales. Um, and now I'm currently a project partner at this at the firm um, within the internal medicine, neuroscience and vaccines business unit. But I envisage myself being in a high position within a pharmaceutical company, being a leader within a pharmaceutical company, leading it through the tough time, through the new times we're going to have our pre post COVID. 